Okay, next let's turn to page 50 and just talk about some points to remember during the coaching. The first thing is that you want to start with a mini contract. Now, you've already done the, the big agreement, the written contract. What we mean here by the mini contract is every coaching session that we do, we're going to do a little mini contract. So you would say, example, client, it's going to be a 20 minute or a 60 minute coaching session today. And I just want to qualify that you understand what coaching is and what it's not. I'm not here to tell you what to do or to give you any advice, but rather to create a safe, trusting space for you where you can explore options and opportunities to get to your goal. So it's a little mini contract. The client knows what's expected of them, what I'm going to do as the coach, what the time period is. The next thing we want to have the client celebrate something about themselves. You know, very often the client comes to the coaching session and you ask them, how's it going? And they say, oh, life is so awful. It's so tough. And that starts the coaching session on a bit of a low. So we want to start the coaching session on a high. So we ask the client, client, what would you like to celebrate about yourself today? Now notice that the word is, what do you want to celebrate? And that implies that the client has something to celebrate about themselves. If you ask a closed question like, do you have anything or can you, then the lazy unconscious mind is just going to go, no, nothing. And of course, you're still on the negative. We want to get the client to give us a positive uh, celebration about themselves. Remember, of course, the celebration as well. As we celebrate our client, as we go through the coaching process, we are not there. The celebration is to celebrate them, not to give them compliments or that they need to feel that they are working to get our approval. Just bear that in mind. Then the next thing you want to know is what's the goal for the session? Now, of course, you probably have your overall longer term goal. Now, during each session, the client might have a individual goal that they want to achieve. And we as the coach want to obviously keep track of what the longer term goal is. However, a client may come to a particular session where, you know what, some external things have happened that week and they might just not be in the right place. And so they want to discuss something else. They've got a different goal that they want to achieve. Or, of course, it might be still a, a minor goal that they want to achieve en route to achieving the overall goal. All too often I hear coaches who here jumps on the very first thing that the client says. You know, really understand what it is that the client wants for this session. If the client says, I want to lose 100 pounds, they're not going to do that during the session. So client, what do you want from this session? Oh, I want to lose weight. Great client, I hear you saying you want to lose weight, but what do you want from this session? We want to be very specific about what the outcome is so that they can measure at the end of the session as to where they are in relationship to when they started. Whilst we're busy coaching, we want to make sure that it is a safe and trusting environment, that there's no judgment from us, and that the client feels comfortable and that free to be able to open up and to communicate with us. Of course, as we do this, we also want to acknowledge our clients, acknowledge them for things that they've done, things that they haven't done, you know, maybe it was something that they wanted to stop doing, acknowledging them for growth. Bearing in mind that the acknowledgement, the same as when we celebrate the client, it's not about our approval and, you know, the client shouldn't strive to get our approval. Of course, we want to remember the Pareto principle. The client should be speaking 80% of the time. In fact, maybe even 90% of the time. All we want to do as the coach, use active listening and then 
ask the question that's going to help lead the client to the outcome that they need to get to. One of the tips to, to use here is once you've asked your client a question, just zip it, just keep quiet and let the client empty out. And once the client is finished talking, you still keep quiet for another three seconds. And in fact, you can even do a triple nod. So you nod your head three times whilst keeping quiet. And this is a great way to actually get the client to talk more. Or, you know, if they've got more that they wanted to say, this is a, a wonderful opportunity. It allows them to be able to do that. And probably nobody's ever given your client that amount of space to be able to speak and to empty out. Now, when I say empty out, there's a fine line between allowing the client to empty out and having the client go round and round and round and round in circles. As much as we want the client to empty out and respect them and give them that space, we also don't want the client to be going around in circles and, you know, we would eloquently and politely bring the client back to, you know, the actual coaching itself. And whilst we do this, we're going to ask one question at a time and one open question at a time. You see, sometimes coaches, they ask like two or three questions within one sentence. And again, the unconscious mind is going to answer the easy one. And you might just have had a wonderful breakthrough question in what you're asking. However, because you're asking two or three different questions, the client isn't really thinking about that question. They're just going to answer the one quick, easy answer that they can think off the top of their head. So take your time. Give those few seconds after the client has answered. Triple nod. Gives you more time to think about the question that you need to ask. Ask one question. Ask an open-ended question. Now there's a time and a place for a closed question. But for the most part, we want to use open questions. Ask the client for permission. If something comes up, let's say you're busy coaching the client and you keep on hearing that they've got this limiting belief. Or you keep on hearing that maybe they angry, angry, angry. Well, then ask the client for permission. Client, I keep on hearing you say that you're angry. Would that be something that you would like to work on? And so we get the client's permission to coach in sensitive new areas. Like I said, ask open-ended questions. Use your active listening techniques. And it's only through using active listening that you're going to be able to ask powerful questions. Do a time check with your client. So if you're coaching for an hour, then at sort of 50 minutes, I might say to the client, OK, client, we've got 10 minutes left of this session. You know, so as we moving to the end of the session, so the client knows that there's only 10 minutes left. There's nothing worse than having the end of the hour come up and then all of a sudden saying to a client, right client, that's the top of the hour and, you know, I'll see you next time. That really breaks rapport and it kind of leaves the client hanging sometimes as well. So we want to be polite and we want to do a, a time check for the client so that, again, we both know where we're at. Ask the client for their takeaway. You know, what are they taking away from the session? And also, what are they committing to doing? Now, sometimes the client may answer the same thing for both takeaway and commitment. However, it actually is two separate questions. Because the takeaway for the session might be something like, I have the skills to be able to do this. And my takeaway is that I now have belief in myself that I can do it. Whereas the commitment is the specific thing that they're committing to, to be able to go and achieve that next step. So the specific action steps that they're going to do. And then I want to finish off with accountability. How is the client going to stay accountable for doing the tasks that they need to do? How are they going to stay accountable for, for taking those action steps? And of course, 
I don't want to be my client's accountability partner. You know, sometimes I hear coaches say, oh, just email me or give me a call once you've done that and let me know how you're getting on. Well, the problem with that is that the coach can become a crutch for the client. And I don't want to be a crutch for my client. I want to work with my client so that they can soar, so that they can deal with the coaching, get go through the coaching process and then go out there and take the action and achieve the things that they want to achieve. So those are just some things that you know I think is important to bear in mind whilst you're busy coaching the client.